Kenny Florian joins us on the Fookerton.com. Appreciate your time, Kenny. Clearly, when you hang up the gloves, you're going to have a long career in broadcasting. So if you've got to go, <laughs> if you've got to go anywhere, cut me off because I just love getting your take on some of these big <laughs> events going on in MMA, sure. man. Uh, sure. uh, Anderson Silva, uh, I, I'm sure you have a lot of respect for that guy. He's a phenomenal fighter. Mm -hmm. And he's in a situation now where he's talking about retiring and he does and does not want to fight certain you know, opponents that the UFC and Dana's throwing out there. And you had that whole showboating thing that went on with Patrick Cote where was he showing him up, was he not, is he doing this as a way to try and piss off Dana White because he's not happy with the matchups. And then you mm -hmm. also have the fact that he hasn't drawn very well when he's the main event, despite the yep. fact that he's one of the best fighters in the world. How do you yep. see it playing out with the spider? Is this guy going to hang it up? Are they going to go out and maybe bring some fighters from Japan or for some other divisions for him to fight? Because it would be a shame if he stopped fighting in the UFC because he thought there was nothing left for him here. Yeah, you know, it definitely, um, you know, with the elite fighters, you, know, you get a guy like Anderson Silva, and he's just tearing everyone uh, apart in the 185-pound division. Uh, motivation is a factor. Uh, I think you brought up a good point. Motivation is a factor um, and can be a factor. We've seen it in boxing before uh, where, where guys, you know, Mayweather, for example, uh, well, they're, they're just retired. You know, they, they've made enough money. He, has a, he lives a very comfortable life in Brazil. Um, and, you know, I'm sure he feels like, listen, you know, I'm going to have a few more fights, get my retirement money, um, and, and that's pretty much it. Call, call it a career. Um, he doesn't need to fight any longer. He's got plenty of money. Um, he's beaten the best out there um, that have faced him, and, and I'm sure he feels like he's done it all in the sport. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, Dana and the UFC, they, they need, definitely need to keep him motivated, keep him interested, um, keep those fights coming uh, for him, um, either at 85 or at 205. Um, I still think there's a couple interesting fights for him uh, at 185, and, and Certainly so at, at 205. There's a lot of great fights for him. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately the decision is going to be made with Anderson Silva. Um, you know, it, it, you brought it up in another good point of, of him um, maybe not being the biggest draw uh, for them as far as pay-per-view numbers go. Um, and I think that a lot of it has to do with, you know, very simply that, that he doesn't speak English, you know. Um, yeah. I know he's working on it. He's trying to um, improve his English. and. And, you know, for interviews, pe people just uh, have a hard time identifying with a guy um, who, who don't speak their language, obviously. And, and uh, you know, he can't do as much uh, media and, and, and PR as some of the other guys who are stateside and, and him residing in Brazil and not being able to speak, speak English. I think it, it does hurt him, and it, it's a shame because uh, he really is, you know, in my opinion, the the best fighter right now fighting pound for pound. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kenny Florian joins us. You can check out his website, KennyFlorian.com. He's the number one contender for the lightweight championship. Two other uh, MMA questions in general to ask you, and then I'll let you go, and I appreciate your time, man. You bet, man. Um, first of all, there's been a lot of speculation. I love the WEC. I, I think it's phenomenal. The lighter guys, they throw so hard. Uh, there's, there's such great talent in uh, Pulver and Uriah Faber and Jamie Varner and, the, and Carlos yep. Condit. So many guys. But they're talking about maybe bringing in Gina Carano and having her maybe fight some one-offs in the WEC. Traditionally, Dana has been very hesitant to promoting women's mixed martial arts and because his job is to make this sport mainstream, and I see the value in that. I'm just curious, how much value do you place in that? Clearly, Gina Carano is a big star, and her name would help. Do you think she has a place in the WEC, or should that be handled in a different way? No, I, I definitely think she does. Um, Gina Carano, is a, she is a serious, you know, uh, star right now. I think um, both from her exposure, um, you know, fighting on TBS and, and doing all the, the PR media that she does, uh, being on American Gladiators. I mean, that, that could bring in uh, a, lot of, a lot more fans to the sport. Um, and uh, de definitely, why not? The, the only challenge is, again, she'd be in a similar situation, even worse, uh, so than, than Anderson Silva in, in finding um, consistent competition for her. There's just not a lot, lot of women in mixed martial arts right now, um, the, you know, period. And, and it, you really need to find uh, now females who are at a high level, fighting at a high level, who can challenge her, and at the same time be in the same uh, weight class as her. So um, you definitely have some challenges there. Uh, but w why not? I mean, I, I think it would definitely be a good good medium to get her on there, get her fighting in the WEC. I'm sure the WEC would would uh, you know would would benefit from that, and uh, it'd be interesting to see um, her fighting over there. It'd be, it'd be cool, great for the sport. 
Hmm. I agree. Uh, last question I have, and again, I, I don't know what the UFC's policies are bringing in free agents. I, I didn't think they would bring in Brock Lesnar. They did, and it, it paid off. There's a guy that you're familiar with that I know by name. I haven't had a chance to see fight, but Yoshihiro Akiyama. This is a guy that's a villain, but one of the best fighters on the planet over in Japan. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you could probably correct me, he's left his division to try and pursue a career in the UFC. Now, I know there's some problems with reservations with the money that he would require, but I know that's probably a guy that you would like to mix it up with. Do you see the UFC bringing him in, and if so, will you be matched up with him? Um, you know, I, honestly, I have no idea uh, on that. I mean, uh, like I said, I'm always willing to, to fight the best guys uh, in the world, uh, you know, and I think it's great. If we can get some more Japanese talent, I mean, there certainly is a lot of it at 155. Uh, it, it'd be great, you know. Anytime we can, we can bolster the division and make it even stronger. It's already extremely competitive. Uh, it, it's great for the sport, great for the fans, and, and great for the fighters. You know, we're all in this to, to challenge ourselves. And um, I, I don't have any information on the UFC uh, pursuing him, but uh, that, that definitely would would be great. You know. Yeah, you got to be in favor of that. And then finally, again, I lied. L one last one. Well, <laughs> I, I apologize, man. You just, you're kicking ass. The the fighters, no that, the fighters that are in at Lead XC. They're talking about maybe a King of the Cage or some of these other maybe Showtime. Somebody buying yeah. out these contracts. These guys yeah. are sitting over there. They're basically being held hostage. You got some great talent over there that I'd love to see in the UFC or at other promotions. How do you feel about that? If if you were in their shoes, that just must be the worst thing on earth. If you if your trade is fighting, all you want to do is be in the cage, and you're yeah. just sitting there in limbo. How do you see that being resolved? No, I mean talk about being in limbo. I mean you get guys like Jake Shields who uh, must be frustrated. I mean uh, he's kind of uh, you know just in, in a weird situation right now. He wants to go and fight in the UFC or fight in another promotion. He wants to make money. He needs to make money. And right now you get you get an organization like Elite XC who are holding on to their contracts. And it's unfortunate. One thing that we, we did on, on MMA Live, we got information that it's possible that uh, Elite XC may be revived. Uh, they may be uh, bought out um, by possibly a CBS or another organization um, and, and, you know, get a, a money infusion to kind of revive uh, that organization. I, I don't know. Um, you know, when that would be or if that's, you know, 100%, but that's something they are working on um, on doing. So either that's going to happen that we'll get, you know, Elite XC back on or, um, you know, simply I, I think they're going to have to do get tough and, and get lawyers involved and and uh, send the pit bulls in suits after them, you know, and say, listen, you know, let, let go of my contract. I need to fight. I need to make money. You can't hold on to my, my contract for this long, plain and simple. Hmm. So yeah. um, I, I think it's got to be tough for those guys. Kenny, you're, you're one of the, the best fighters out there. You're the most likable fighter I've ever talked to. Um, by, by the way, for those of us that work here at the Mighty WJFK, I don't know if you remember this, you were on our morning show a couple months back, and you actually choked out the movie critic, put him to sleep in studio. Yeah. He's uh, this guy named Kevin. He's one of the most annoying kids on the planet. I have to say, and I think we'd all like to say, thank you for doing that. That was a great service to us. Could I forget? How could I forget putting him to sleep? That was both scary and funny at the same time. Yeah, and it was thrilling for the rest of us here. Uh, Kenny, <laughs> KennyFlorian.com. We can't wait to see you get a shot of BJ. Anything else you want to plug, man? Nothing, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Um, appreciate all the support from the fans, and you know, keep keep watching, uh, keep watching. Hopefully, I'll be back in the cage soon. That's great. And until then, you kick ass on MMA Live, man. Thanks a lot. We appreciate uh, it. Thanks, man. You're the man. Take, Take it care. easy.